What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Cesar, and we are talking about Bitcoin Cash today. Shout out to the Dragon Riders in the House of the Dragon. We're sitting at about $464 right now. You know, yesterday I was asking for us to close above 465 or uh, even 477 would have been nice. We didn't do that, but we did close above 463, pretty close to 465. So we'll, we'll, we can kind of count that. What's nice about yesterday, even though it was only a less than 2% day to the upside, it did provide us this little low at the 40 area on the RSI, an area that we've found support on before once, twice, three times, you know, more times than that, going back in time even right, right here, a little bit just below there, a um, little bit above right there right there as well it's it's not every time right but it is an area that we found support on several times especially in the in the more recent uh months but <clears throat> could this be a setup for us to have higher lows and higher highs could this be the setup that we're looking for to drive us all the way up to the overbought zone getting a higher high in there getting above and staying above the 60 area staying in this bullish area of control um, this could be the beginning of that. So that's what's that, that's a really nice look. That's what's nice about even though it was a less than 2% day from open to close, that is a nice setup that we have going for us here. I do believe, and it's, it's pretty early to say, but I was saying this in the very beginning of yesterday. I'm going to say it again today. I think that was the low. I'm very confident that was the low. There is still a risk that we could go lower. Of course there is. We're down in this area. As long as we're in this area, there's that risk. So all I'm going to ask is that we just continue to grow, continue to go higher. The further away we get from this zone, the more likely it is a higher low the more likely this rsi looks to be like stronger right we're going to get a lot stronger and then we can provide some stronger moves as well what's nice about this kind of correspondence here with the rsi is if this does what i think it's going to do <clears throat> this would be kind of like the last higher low that we would have before we actually get into the overbought zone now a lot of people who first start using the rsi or you learn about the rsi you, you YouTube it, you Google it, whatever, you hear this zone here being called the overbought zone. And it is, it is the overbought zone, but really the way you should look at it is not, it's overbought, it's time to sell, it's oversold, it's time to buy. You shouldn't look at it like that. Like ideally that's how it works, right? But especially on a daily time frame, even on a weekly time frame, overbought, really what that means is this is your strength zone. You're showing strength up here. You're showing weakness down here. What do you do when you show strength? You, you, you see your strongest moves. You see your biggest moves, right? And I'll, I'll just prove it real quick. Looking at the RSI here in the overbought zone. Look at, look at this right here. This is before your overbought zone. Nice. Coming up into it. That was a nice move up, but a lot stronger, right? A lot stronger moves here. Bigger candles here and you were in the overbought zone. Huge candle, you were in the overbought zone, right? This didn't send you to the overbought zone, you're already in it, right? But you saw some small moves up and then as soon as you got into the overbought zone, bigger moves. Um, bigger move there, relatively speaking, but not sustained. Anyways, at any rate, all I'm trying to say is if we get to the overbought zone, if this is what it looks like in the RSI, then not only would we grow in price, but we would look to break out of this little box that we're in here, right? We would look to break out of this. Um, <clears throat> being overbought and being at a breakout point is a perfect storm to go back to these high points and even beyond that. So if we were to move at, I would assume while we're in this zone, perhaps we move it at a similar rate as we have here, right? Those both look kind of similar in slope. Why can't I grab the line? There we go. You know, something like that. Just rough little estimates here. I mean, basically the same amount of time. It could be, you know, maybe the second week of June, perhaps even the like midpoint of June that we could break this zone here. It could be toward the end of the month. And all, all I'm trying to say is by the end of the month, if not sometime in the very beginning of July, we will likely be back above $700 and potentially even beyond that. We can even be beyond that. So that's that's kind of exciting. Um, getting rid of this this large phase of just like, are we going higher, are we going lower, we're going up, we're going down, we're going up, we're going down. Um, seeing a break of this range would be really nice, right? And I think, I think it's pretty obvious, right? We're being held down by that line there. So resistance, 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 resistance. Once we break, $530 roughly, technically 528, 33 cents, I guess, um, 529, whatever. When we break that line, it's on. It's on to the upside for sure. So um, we'll see. 
we'll see. We're just at the beginning of it. If this is if this is the next higher low, we've got some some days, even weeks, to figure this out. But time will tell. <clears throat> I want to look at the BCH BTC pair now. BCH BTC. Because if this happens the way I think it's going to happen. I, I want to actually go back to BCH B, B, uh, USD. <coughs> Can't talk, man. <coughs> if you look at the four hour, the four hour RSI, it looks kind of weak. It's hanging out below the 50 a lot. You got a little bit above it here. Sure, that's nice. But you have this kind of double bottom, which as weak as it looks in this whole area, that double bottom is what set you up for this slow grind up. Yes, but this, this slow grind could turn into a quick move up over the coming days and I mean the further up you move the further up you move in this four hour RSI in the price you know the better this daily RSI is going to look too the better the price is going to look the more uh, concrete this low becomes so good things even even though the four hour RSI looks a little bit bad I would say it could be considered good based off of this double bottom here okay the reason why I came back to that was because on BCH BTC for on the daily, it kind of resembles a similar look to the four hour on the USD pair, right? Where you're hanging out below the 50, but you've got this little double bottom down here. And we're kind of at the beginning of that, right? We have yet to see this thing grow. And I think it will. I think that's the low, finally. I think we've actually found our low on the BCH BTC pair. Um, no, it is not bullish divergence. It'd be nice if it was, but a, a double bottom is also nice, right? A higher low is always is always welcome, but a double bottom is cool too, especially if we can get some separation. There is the risk, of course, being down here that we could go lower. There is, but if we look at this for what it's worth, it kind of looks like we're at the bottom of this range. It even looks like we're getting what they call a partial decline, which is where you reach for this trend line, but you can't quite get to it. That's actually a bullish thing, especially when comparing the RSI, comparing the price itself. It's kind of like a double bottom in itself. So I would expect that we would at least return to the upper end of this trend, but this could be the setup. You, you generally see this kind of a partial decline where you reach for the line, but you don't quite hit it when you are about to break out to the upside, the opposite direction there. So um, if we are to break out, if we are to break out, this could also see some bullish readings, some above 60 into the bullish area of control and overbought readings up here, uh, potentially by the end of the month or sometime in the beginning of July as well. If BCH BTC is getting overbought, is seeing strength, is breaking out of its consolidation, we might see an extension off of this move by the end of this month or even within the first two weeks of July. That would put us at about 1.2%, 1.4% of a Bitcoin, somewhere in that range from the current price first Bitcoin. That is a 75, 76% gain versus 106% gain. 76 to 106% gain versus Bitcoin, right? So this is versus Bitcoin. If Bitcoin were to move up 50% in the time that it took BCH BTC to move up, um, let's say it moved up 106%. If BTC moved up 50% by the time that this thing moved up 100%, Bitcoin Cash itself would actually move up 156%. That's how that works. So um, this isn't saying this is how much I expect Bitcoin Cash to grow. This is just versus BTC. Uh, and it doesn't have to be to the upside. I guess I guess BTC could drop and BCH could just drop less, but that's a little bit less common. At any rate, all I'm trying to say is if things go the way I think they're going to go with the USD pair, then I think it's very safe to assume that we're about to see um, some fireworks fly with the BCH BTC chart. And if we do see extensions based off of this local high to local low here, if we do, that's going to be a higher high. We will have our first like significant higher low discernible higher high uh, trend that Bitcoin Cash has ever had in its history, right? And there's moments, there's like small moments where you've got you know, I guess you've got a high here and a higher high here and there's a low. You've got a higher low and a higher high technically, but you can see, right? You can see all the discernible highs. Here's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. They're all they're all lower highs, right? This could be the first time. We didn't get one here. This is a double double top of sorts, but this could be the first time that we actually set up a higher high relative to the higher lows and higher highs coming in together, right? 
Um, the best we've had before was like a running flat with, uh, it's, it's technically, this could, I don't know if it's a running flat. I don't know my, my Elliott wave theory. I didn't mean to call it a running flat. I just mean the, the bottom is running flat and then you're decreasing into it. If that running flat comment didn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. I was just using a term that might not have been appropriate. Maybe it is appropriate. Again, I don't know too much about Elliott wave theory. This could be a running flat. If maybe it is, I, I, I just, I genuinely don't know if it's not cool. I, you know, I, I really don't know. Um, all the formations about that. I know some basic stuff about Elliott wave. I know, I know zigzags. I know impulse waves. I know corrective waves. But that's that's about it. I know how to do wave counts because I know fibs, um, and it's obvious once you see it. But, anyways, anyways, um, that's a discussion for another day, I guess. Um, be very exciting. It would be very exciting if by the month we were above this high. Um, for, for multiple reasons, man. Bitcoin Cash would prob probably be doing well. Um, if we check, if we compare here, BCH, USD, new price scale, put it in log. There we go. And then maybe just shrink it down a little bit. See if I can pull it. Yeah. You can see that at any point when BCH, BTC is doing great, so is the USD pair, right? Even if it's not sustained, it's it still does its best work when we see these expansion phases, right? Here we did, here we did. Um, we really could be seeing our next leg up that, that could send us up to, toward $1,000 for BCH with this move, with this higher high, which, which would be phenomenal. Again, I, I think that that could happen if not by the end of this month, sometime in July. And I suppose it could happen as late as August, but I would expect that we start to see this happening over the course of the next couple weeks, if not within the next four weeks. I, I, I don't know. That's all I got to say. If you guys like the video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more. I hope that all makes sense. Really what I was trying to do is just tie in the BCH USD potential for the RSI to the BCH BTC, if these things coincide, right? If, if they, if we both, if we see both of these things moving from their oversold zones all the way up to their overbought zones, that would be phenomenal for, for BCH. We would see not just some upwards price action, right? Some just like standard volatility like this, where we're slowly but surely crawling our way up. Come on now. But we'd actually see a move like this where where we're breaking out, we're moving higher. Time will tell, but low volume, generally speaking, when you're in a phase of consolidation and you're dying off in volume, that is when you get to the point that, uh, that you are going to see a breakout. Whether it's to the downside or to the upside remains to be seen, but I do think it's going to be to the upside. Time will tell. It'll probably take a little bit of time, but within this month, I think we will have our directional heading. I would, ex I would assume that over the next week or two, we will be above this price, potentially dramatically higher than that price, but I would assume that we are at least above it. So that's all I got. Hit that like button, subscribe to see more. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.